I am typically a story-driven, action-adventure oriented gamer who loves first-person shooters, racing games, the occasional RPG and JRPG, and visual novels. I was never into life sims because I thought those were just boring and pointless. Why would I want to make a character of myself to do anything in a fantasy sandbox world where the objective was to live out a digital life? Well, looking in retrospect, yeah, it's fun, but younger me was not touching that shit with a 10-foot pole. All I wanted was to play friendly matches of Call of Duty with my pals and meet new and awesome people in the matchmaking lobbies. Prior to this pandemic, I seen all the hype surrounding the latest Animal Crossing game, Animal Crossing New Horizons, the successor to Animal Crossing New Leaf on the 3DS, and the first entry onto the Nintendo Switch. I had no intention of buying this game, but then I got sick, and I was home in my bed for about a week, depressed, dying, and getting through my backlog of games. Every time I would check Instagram, Twitter, Reddit, it would be filled with nothing but Animal Crossing. Needless to say, I started to let the FOMO sink in, and decide to take a leap of faith and see what the fuss was about, expecting to think this was going to be a waste of $60, but oh my god was I fucking wrong. What you say? I wanted to sit on this story for a little while, but it became clear that the success of Animal Crossing New Horizons is unparalleled to any of its predecessors. The game released back on March 20th of this year, and only just a month in, it has already broken some records. Becoming the best-selling game in its launch month, making it the number two best-selling game of the year already, achieving the third highest launch month physical dollar in unit sales of any Nintendo published game in history, New Horizons skyrocketed to seventh place in the Nintendo's top 10 best-selling Switch games, and that is only going to continue to reach higher. Lastly, the sales of New Horizons in the United States have already surpassed the lifetime sales of all other Animal Crossing franchise games. What? What the fuck? Animal Crossing has always had this appeal of being a game for anyone to play. The formula behind it, while not original to the likes of The Sims, Tycoon PC games, and any other life simulator, it has its own flavor that has become iconic if you're in the gaming community. You play as a character of yourself that comes to a city slash town slash village and starts a life with other people who are really just animals but they are standing and moving like humans. You meet Tom Nook who helps you mortgage your home, do stuff to build up the community for others to come and see and eventually want to move in. New Horizons is the same spin except you are on an island and you go around to other islands to harvest materials, fruit specific to an island, and meet other people on those islands and convince them to move into your island. The reason why we are here in the first place isn't to talk about the game, but why the game's release at the beginning of this pandemic was probably one of the best things for both Nintendo as a company and the consumers who are investing money and time into it. It is no secret that Animal Crossing, since its creation and release in 2001 on the Nintendo GameCube, had became a staple franchise for the company. If you owned any Nintendo device after the GameCube, you were expecting a new Animal Crossing game to come to the new console. When looking at the past sales figures for each Animal Crossing game since 2001, the original Animal Crossing game on the GameCube sold 2.32 million copies, Wild World on the Nintendo DS sold 12 million copies, City Folk on the Wii sold 4.32 million copies, and New Leaf on the 3DS sold 12.45 million and is currently the highest selling title in the series. Amiibo Festival, no one ever talks about that garbage, and then New Horizons after just over a month is already at almost 9 million sold. Total, you're looking at 42 million worldwide, which compared to the likes of big budget titles like Call of Duty and EA's games like Madden NFL and The Sims, and even Nintendo's other IPs like Mario and Zelda, it is nothing to brag about. But if you look at it from this perspective of a Nintendo only IP in the genre of life sim games, then it's a worldwide success story that is only going to continue to grow as New Horizons is selling faster than any other game in the franchise history. There is excitement around Animal Crossing and it shows in the number just presented.
If we look back in time to when New Horizons was announced, it was shown at the end of Nintendo's 2018 E3 Direct with a release window of 2019. As time passed, we did not hear much about the game, and eventually it was revealed to be pushed to early 2020 release. Much to the dismay of many fans, this ended up being beneficial to Nintendo and the Switch since the virus attacked the world at the very beginning of 2020, causing everyone to stay indoors even still to this day. This left many people with lots of free time, to say the least, and after everyone got their icy stimulus checks, most people ended up picking up video games to play. Switches started to become hard to find in stores as the catalog of games was more than suffice to justify spending the money and the release of Animal Crossing New Horizons further added to the scarcity of the Nintendo Switch. Oh, I'm gonna catch this tiger butterfly right now. Oh my god! Tom Nook just said I hope you get COVID! Animal Crossing has always given a glimpse into the life of a cute digital version of yourself managing a whole community with the objective of bringing joy, growth, and life. Most of the things you do in Animal Crossing you can also do in real life if you choose. Minus being the mayor and flying to a random island and building up a community. Unless you are a mayor or a trust fund baby and you can do all these things then bless you my child. But given the obvious state of the world, there are complications preventing that. Animal Crossing fills that hole for some that were used to doing everyday activities but cannot anymore due to the current climate of the world. Moreover, there's a lot of room to design your character's home, town, island the way you want it and with ridiculous possibilities like growing money trees to creating your own Kyoto village. It is a fun and addicting experience that makes us all want to come back for more every single day with earning nook miles and the endless amount of ways you can harvest to craft items and or sell for lots and lots of bells. The last point is an important one. The current climate of the world dealing with this pandemic has forced kicked its way into many communities, causing a divide with everyone mandated to stay home and everyone looking for endless conspiracy theories to be the truth as to why this is all happening. I feel as though there has been a kick in loneliness into many of us who have been so used to engaging with others and being in a different setting where there's a lot of people. Some even rely on those crowds or social interactions just to get by most days. Animal Crossing brings those things back to life in its own game as it is your job to do so. You are the mayor of your town, village, island, etc. And the task that Tom Nook and Isabella bestow upon you is for the result of having more people move in and become a whole community. Once you have people, you can check on them, provide them help, and they sometimes can even gift you something for being so nice. There are many activities to do together, and even more possibilities when you connect with your Switch friends through a Nintendo Online, making hanging with friends during this pandemic a little easier to deal with. And that's going to do it for today's video. Let me know what you think in the comment section, and be sure to leave a like and subscribe for more content. My name is Thess, stay safe and God bless.